What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to The Climb, Episode 2. Uh, joining me this week, Mr. Venom. How you doing? Hello, I'm here to shitpost on Maine. Alright, okay, okay. I'm your host, X-Ray, as, as always. And joining us this week, our returning guest, Mr. Soulpan. How you doing, sir? Congrats on I'm your great. win. Congrats on your win that you didn't play this in. Yeah, yeah, my win. Uh, I'm here to counter the shit posting. Well, I, okay, I'm gonna be honest. If if uh, you you got a job, you gotta show up this week because uh, Bouncy showed up in. A uh, if I don't, way. yeah, we're just gonna grab him. I think. I think uh, I'll just. <laughs> you just step down. <laughs> Injury. Like, hey, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, I'm out. My, Sorry, my, guys. My hands broken. You know, I got got to mm. sub in. Yeah. Okay. I, I like that. I like that. Um, but we all know Soul Pan. If you don't know Soul Pan, then um, learn about get real. him. Yeah. Get get to know this guy. Like he's a he's a G. So, uh, but week one's officially over. So let's head in to the week one games. Starting off with the summit admin versus. Beware Gaming, a 2-0 for the Summit Admins. Um, game 1, Beware with an early lead, but throws their lead. Um, Strand with a really good performance um, on Caitlyn. And uh, Chain Reaction to lose the game uh, from Naki getting caught, then Firestorm dying, trying to steal the Baron, and then Banana getting caught. And that was pretty much game from there. Um, pretty much attached to his plays. Um, and I said this um, yesterday in the Power Rankings, um, but... I think Strand this season is on his villain arc. Like, he is playing so good right now. He's playing well above, you know, what we know him as. is like a platinum, like a, like a platinum budget tier player. Um, so I'm very happy with his, like, performance this week. And hopefully he can continue it. Um, you know, Tubby's been a big help as well. Uh, and then just game two, Strand, really big lead on the Caitlyn. Again, Tubby, great Seraphine. Uh, they try to counterpick the Seraphine with a, with um, um, a Braum. Uh, doesn't really go the way. But uh, Firestorm really killing Gragas was like ten and like five or something like that. But just got caught a couple times. Uh, and then Summon Admins, good team fights, protecting Strand. Besides a couple fights, uh, and then uh, where they kind of left him and Tubby behind. So uh, but that that's about it for uh, for me. I'm gonna send it over to uh, to Venom. Yeah, this series was not boring to watch, but I'll be honest, it was kind of a battle of how hard can Strand punch Yahuzi in the face over and over again. Um, don't don't do him like that. Don't yeah. don't do Yahuzi. Nothing like against Yahuzi. Like honestly, if I was off rolled ADC against Strand and Tubby, I'd probably go zero and fifteen. Like nothing against Yahuzi, but he's currently silver. I think he peaked. Pl I'm looking at it. He peaked plat. But he plays top, I think. Yeah. So, switching from top to ADC, playing against a solid player like Strain and Tubby, um, even if your support's Barbecue Leona, who's pretty good, like, you're probably not going to win that. Um, I will say, impressive performance by Firestorm Boxer. Um, him, Banana, uh, played really well in the top jungle matchup. I know everyone's talked about, I think it's a one, was it a one cake is his name? Mm -hmm. Is that what I don't know. You're uh, close. The top laner, yeah. Uh, a wand cake everybody's been talking about is the second best top laner. Um, I don't think he did anything crazy, but I also think he absorbed a lot of pressure from the jungle. Mm -hmm. Firestorm just kind of kept camping the shit out of him the whole game. So the fact that he stayed relatively in the game, his Shen, he did what he had to do. He hit taunts. He ultied Strand. Uh, he kept Strand alive, so... Hmm. Uh, overall, it was kind of a bot diff, a bot support diff. Um, Frost played fine. I think NAQI didn't have a great game, didn't have a particularly bad game. I think Frost did win lane, but... Uh, or NAQI did start 5-1 and one on Syndra, I think, game one, before they threw it. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's it was kind of just bot lane. Like, you can't have an ADC that's like four levels up, 70 CS at like... 12 minutes as Caitlyn with Tubby at Seraphine and expect to lose that game, particularly game two. But yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting yeah. to see when Strand plays against better bot lanes. I mean, that's just Caitlyn, group... though. You, if she has a lead, yeah. she's like so hard to 
kill. Yeah, but even that that leads to, like I don't care what champ you're on. He could have been on any champ you're winning that. But I think it'll be interesting to see how Strand and Tubby play because their group has insanely good bot lane duos. Mm -hmm. You have um, let's see, is this you have Nico Spirit Man, uh, Thim plus Ender Fridge, which we haven't seen yet. Uh, King Caterwall and Light Spear, Jason Brissy. Uh, like, you have pretty good bot lanes in this group. Thankfully, they avoid Rob Garrett, Astral Sifra, um, Affection Gamer Destroyer. They avoid that bot lane. Yep. Uh, but no, overall, good good showing. Some of the admins did what they had to. Gourmet looks solid on, I think, Wukong, and I forgot the other jungle played. Looks solid all around. Not much to take from it. You, you, you forgot cookies. The boy Cookies. I he said, said cookies. Gourmet. Oh, he's did. Yeah, I said gourmet. Okay, yeah, I heard gourmet. I, I heard because I don't normally call them gourmet. I call them cookies. So, um. oh, I just called them gourmet because I didn't feel like. Sorry, gourmet cookies. The he's got a lot of names. You can right. you can choose. All right. All right. Uh, I, Buff I Chad it. guy gourmet cookies. Okay. Okay. Like got a house. it. Like. <laughs> um. All right, Paul. Let, let's let's hear your thoughts on this on this series. Sure. So game one, I think Beware had one of the best early games we've seen from any team so far it was actually completely insane um and we can call it a throw i think it might just be like some early season jitters i mean uh good plays from the bot lane duo from some admins to like kind of turn the game around but honestly like they they had the first two drakes and they have a maokai and it was kind of a shocker to me that like it was just people kept getting picked really early on i think it was like banana and naqi were just like misstepping right before objective timers and then they could never actually walk down and secure the third drake to like really put the pressure on some of the admins mm -hmm. and i swear to god if they get sold this game it's 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 gonna be one even with the uh the throws they were making um but i mean it was just like a few team it wasn't just the like not setting up for dragon getting caught like they're also making team finding mistakes in this game mm -hmm. um they're they there was a team fight where they they sent maokai sedge and xyolt into tubby just for him to be too skinny and walk away from it and then they like just kept chasing with the jungle, and like they were so desperate to find something after burning three ults, and then they just like had this some admins had like a beautiful collapse, and they just mopped them. Um, and then once they had that gold lead kind of secured for themselves, they was it felt like it was over for for yeah. Beware. They just like they lost steam, and their comp just kind of fell apart. Um, and then obviously the the ADC differential uh, strand coming up big in this game makes it impossible to come back. Mm. Um. Game two, I think Firestorm had a great debut on the Gragas. Uh, beautiful game. He's just getting spoon-fed kills, like running lane to lane. Um, I think it was just like a really hard draft to play full AP Gragas into it too. Because like this is a champ that like you get the lead. You're still a melee carry that has to just kind of dash in and hope they hit someone. I mean, you're playing something like Syndra, uh, you just don't get to play. Like You just get to walk yeah. away. Um the other kind of funny thing was that there was this draft identity uh, for Beware that was like a full anti-dive um, between Zaya, Gragas, Ilawi, uh, Poppy, and Lissandra. Like, all champs and they're really good at, like, someone dives in, that person's going to die no matter what. You're diving, you can't dive Ilawi, you can't dive Gragas, you can't dive Zaya. Poppy's blocking a dash. It's like perfect anti-dive comp. And then you look at the opposite side of what some admins have, and it's like, not really that divey. It's like... They can sit back with Caitlyn, they can siege, they're, they're waiting for, they're just begging you to dive them, actually, because they have a Shen R just sitting on someone. So, I mean, like, yeah, I think it was another thing where, like, even though they found some really good early leads, the person that had all the gold really isn't going to be able to play the game in the way that will allow them to carry. Um, hmm. So, despite Firestorm having a crazy good game, it just they just couldn't convert this one to a win. Uh, but overall, I think Beware has, got, has, like, really good promise here. Um, and the big like shocker i think for everyone was how much some admins this series played through bot uh, and if we'll continue to do that in, in other series going forward it was just like a we can abuse this differential strand between yahoozy and right. really make um really push our lead through that so i don't know it's it, it, early season kind of hard to say like what their game plan is going to be going forwards yeah for sure um and one last thing before we move on to the next game game one my biggest pet peeve of this of game one was bananas build uh he played york and then went lethality into like two tanks i'm pretty sure so it's like uh, i just i just don't think he's ever killing anyone uh like i mean you hit like so yeah you hit eon strand right but it's like uh i don't think you're ever killing strand because you're not gonna be able to get on top of him and he's just gonna auto attack your uh 
your little goblins or whatever they're called. So, uh, but yeah, moving on to our next game, uh, McMammals versus Scar, the biggest upset I think this week for me. Um, you know, you know, most people had McMammals like number one in the power rankings uh, last week. Um, this week, for me personally, I ranked them four, 14th. I rank, ranked them last because of how you know poorly they played. Um, Adolfo got work game one, uh, and uh, if anyone doesn't know, this guy used to be like like renamed something like, and it was like a Warwick name. Basically, he's Warwick one trick. Um, so I'm surprised he got that. Um, and honestly, I see why the, a lot of people ban it against him because that was a really good work uh, game for him. Um, it almost felt like five random players playing for the first time. It honestly felt like at least game one wise. Um, uh, Gar's first grade class played well. Brissy debut as support. Um, so that was exciting to see as well. Uh, and then game two, much closer game, came down to pretty much the last play. Um, McMammals actually, like, Gar's first grade class actually had a lead in this game. And then, uh, McMammals actually were fighting back quite a bit. So, like I said, it came down to the last play. So it was a really fun series to watch. Um, I don't really have a whole lot of else for this one, so I'm going to send it over to, uh, Soul Pan. Yeah, I mean, I think you said it best. This was the big shocker of the week. Um, I wasn't expecting at least McManus to put up, like, a big fight. Maybe, like, a 2-1 kind of series. Um, but, like, it really just never felt close in the game one. Um, they locked this powerful team fight composition and then just never got to the stage where they could actually fight anything. Um, and then also, in this game, I think they don't think they gave uh or they were able to take a single neutral objective like they had to give it all over and so when you have this powerful team fight composition and then you're not able to fight around the objectives and claim a single one of them your entire thing just kind of falls apart so mm -hmm. i think the big lesson here is um this team is going to need to help out their jungler a little bit more uh not just like in game it just means like or a little bit in game but like kind of teaching like when can you go for an objective when can you cross map an objective um and then even maybe like being that decisive voice in game, having to decide for your jungler, um, in these competitive matches, like we need to go like start dragging right now, or like you need to go start dragging. I'll meet you there like two seconds after I push this wave. Like you're gonna have to kind of be that voice for your jungler as they're learning. Um, where are these windows in a game where everyone's on comms together? Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, I think you got to speed. He's got good teachers. Uh, game two uh, decided that Adolf or sorry, Adolfel Kittler has a really yeah. annoying jungle pool. Um, also just had this like crazy maniac pathing this game to get off to extremely early gang spot lane uh so props to them for being a little creative uh the big thing for me this game was that gar got to actually like flex their muscles really hard as a carry top laner didn't look as good as the other aatrox we saw this week but it was still oh, a, yeah. like a, a massive carry threat so i mean props to him for um showing us that he isn't just a jungler uh and getting a chance to finally play a different role um I think the the other thing was that Swain got locked in this series uh, as a flex pick, um, and then it actually got moved to top lanes, which was really interesting to see. Um, mm -hmm. And they took it on R four as an answer into Briar Jinrel, which isn't bad. But then the counter to this was just to lock in some more damage rather than uh, because they have like a pretty low damage ADC. So they picked up Hui and Aatrox into it. Mm -hmm. um, and so the flex pick was kind of neutralized. They managed to move it top lane and then put Pyrosis on Aurelia. So they had this big side lane threat. And then the problem in this game was that rather than having the upper, or rather than like, like last series, or sorry, last, the first game of the series, they uh, weren't able to actually commit to any team fights. In this series, they were never actually able to commit to having Pyrosis be a side lane threat and actually like draw multiple members ever over. They were always grouped as five and fighting as five. Mm -hmm. So it was really weird like seeing. Pyrosis switched his champion, but the team switched its identity in this game. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I think it's just a bit of a... I, I think this is probably like some early season communication jitters as well, mm -hmm. where the team's just not meshing. Um, your, your team's probably like begging Pyrosis to come join them for a fight, and Pyrosis is just like, oh, well, I mean, I guess I have to, and he just ditches the sideline. And then the whole reason they pick Irelia is kind of neutralized, but... Um, Overall, really good, uh, really good um, series by Gar's first grade class, and quite a statement, I think, from Gar. Come out swinging, uh, mm -hmm. a quick, quick two zero. Yeah, and like your opinion, Sopan, just because I, you and Pyrosis are, uh, you know, pretty good friends. Like, do you think 
Listen, Venom, you're you're not part of this conversation right now. Yeah, you're not friends with Pyrosis. You're, you're not friends with Pyrosis. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> but um, like in turn of in terms of like you know because I think I can't remember who he had last season or he had Nightmare and then I think the season before that he had you. So like like in terms of like um junglers, you know this is a downgrade. And what do you think um he can give advice to like? I won't back down just so he can like kind of unlock him in the mid lane. I mean, I back, I won't back down. I think is like bronze or silver right now. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, <laughs> Pyrus has already has all the resources that I give to people who are trying to learn jungle. Um, cause he had Yahuzi that one season too. Um, a little bit on the weaker side. Um, it was Yahuzi jungle, right? I'm not... I think so. Okay. Uh, um, I don't remember. <laughs> It so was I, I, on that team. yeah, I, so I, I've I've already linked him all my resources for like teaching jungle to people. Um, it's just me like a matter of like how much does he want to try and teach and how much does he want to try and like flex his own pool around and like what he's doing in game to make a change to that as well. Right. Um, I'm not really sure what he's gonna go for honestly. Um, he hasn't really reached out to me about like trying to give the guy any advice. So I think he's still he's still doing his his own work. Or um, uh, I mean, it could just be that I went back down as looking to learn on their own too and not really wanting to um be taught a whole ton i, I have no idea i don't know what the dynamic so, is yeah no for sure Ooh, excuse me um uh, all right um non-friend of pi pi uh venom let's hear, you. Let's hear <laughs> somebody, who, somebody who talked to pi pi about this series that's crazy my bad i don't have any insight into this um i'm just i'm no, just i'm I, just give, i'm just giving you shit yeah I, I know you are it's okay just <laughs> wait till you have some uh, abhorrent opinions later on like it's putting a, mcmammal uh, 14 from i saw that this morning nah, 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 well, yeah, listen, um, I, I was worried it was warranted i gave a good reason yeah, yeah just like sifra at 10 after winning <laughs> after winning bot lane going 10 but uh i digress but no um i told pipe by this when i was uh talking to him about it for game one it just felt like um they made zero proactive plays like and this, I think, is in pro probably more because the jungle difference. But every single play they made was, okay, the other team made a play. We're going to try to salvage it. Pai Pai run bot after they double TP'd and killed us bot lane. And then Pai Pai's there. Like, okay, now I have to try to do a 1v3 to salvage one kill. And then he's like, okay, I can't do anything. It has to walk back mid. So, um I think a lot of it was like they just weren't proactive game one. Um, they also weren't aggressive. Like bot lane, they played. I think it was Blitzcrank. It wasn't Blitzcrank Kaisa. It was uh, Blitzcrank um, Jin. Oh yeah, they did play Jin game one. I and then Jason played a game two. But yeah, Nico and um, Spearman. I think they're friends, so I think they have played a lot. They just didn't look like they. I think they hit one hook like pre six or something like. They didn't really play aggressive into Brissy and Jason, who were playing Lucian Nami. Like, even Jason. Minus the screenshot playing... of Hook, we all saw that. It definitely hit, that, for the record. Was... Hey, I I respect the Blitzcrank throwing that and that hitting. That was insanely stupid to hit. But, um, but like, realistically, that was like one of the only Hook's early game they hit. And so Jason and Brissy didn't really play aggressive on Lucian Nami, but they didn't have to. It's like, okay, the Blitz isn't going to go, like, it wasn't flash ing. They weren't setting up plays with their jungle. It just felt like they didn't. They just kind of thought, okay, they'll make a mistake. We'll figure it out. And Jason and Brissy were like, okay, we'll farm out this lane. Like our jungle killed Pi Pi two times pre six. It's like, okay, we're, we're chilling. So that was kind of game one. Uh, game two, I will say, Spirit Man and Nico, they didn't like hard crush lane, but they did play much more aggressive. Mm -hmm. um, and it looked better from them. Like, yeah, I think they got, I think they went 2v, they were 2v2, and I think they traded one for one, and then the enemy jungle came, the briar, and killed them, but it looked better. Like, from just straight up watching the bot lane, they were actually trading and going for kills. Um, a lot of team fighting, Pai Pai's Aurelia is still insane. Um, and then I have a bone to pick with X-Ray here. Um, <laughs> so, uh... There's a certain person on one of these teams that nobody's talked about on the power rankings last week. Um, on, none of us this week. Um, I think he's a mid laner. I'm not sure though. Um, uh, yeah, I think his name is 
Yeah, I think Charles, Odysseus, I, actually... Like, what do you mean? I literally... I, I'm, no, no I'm, you didn't check the tape on the thing. You said, yeah, you know, they have Br Brissy, Jason, Gar, Adolfo, Kittler. Bro, I literally put him fourth. Gar. I literally put him fourth in the power rankings. Nope. Guys, I want you to know, everyone on the podcast, you can't watching it, you can't see this. X Ray, as soon as Venom said anything, pulled up power rankings immediately. <laughs> I, was so I, I was like, I was I like, I'm so like so fast. Care. I'm defending I myself with facts. This week, I'm talking last week. You talked about all four of the other members of Gar's team and didn't talk about Charles. And what happened? What was Charles' score on? Like he he didn't win like because he's playing Vladimir, but. He had a positive scoreline, kept up with Pi-Pi and CS on Vladimir. He solo killed, I don't know if it was solo, maybe with ganks, but he popped off on Huey game two, and you still didn't mention him. Still. You, know, you said Jason played well, Gar played well, Brissy, Adolfo Kittler, and you didn't mention my boy Charles. Put some respect on the DPT. I, I literally put him fourth on the power rankings. I have just I have as much respect I, I see as him I can give him. I, I that is as much respect I can get. I, don't I, don't I think I just don't care about your feelings here, Pat. I see fourth no, place Odysseus. I don't, I don't care. Talk about him. You can put <laughs> Say his name. You want, but don't talk about. Him. You gotta talk about him. Even in your analysis of this series, Charles popped off on Huey. You didn't mention. You just said close game. They lost. That's all I'm saying. Just. Oh my gosh. Hey, put some respect on my boy Charles. But no. Overall, game two was fun to watch. Pi Pi side laning. I think he did solo kill Charles once or twice. Charles, I respect you. Play. I want you to know that. <laughs> but what? You know, I just I'm what really happens in the content team? Oh, hey, I'm gonna stand up for Charles because nobody gonna talk about him. Like, like you gotta talk about him. Okay, I no, I'm sorry. Was, uh, you know what? You I know what? How about this? I'm gonna say this live. All right, you can quote me on this next week. No. I'm gonna say n nothing about the rest of Gar's team. I'm just gonna talk about Odysseus. Thank you. Just Thank Odysseus. Okay. Right. Gonna have right. a bad series this week, and it's <laughs> listen, listen. Oh, don't let me down. Odysseus predictions right now. Uh, listen, yeah, if if pop if he off, pops dude. off, I'll even rank him above Gumby. Okay, don't do that. I, I, I'm not <laughs> telling you to glaze Charles, like. But no, overall, I think McMammals will figure it out. Um, oh. I think Pi Pi and Nico were very good in Summit about teaching their lower oh. elo players to get better like they'll they will sit there and vod review games i know pi pi's done it with me pi pi's done it with um uh gamer destroyer like he, uh, and i think nico did as well with his team last year i don't know nico as well so um but i from what i've heard they will sit down with their low elo player mm -hmm. and help them learn assuming that um their jungler wants to learn right which i think this i have no indication he wouldn't but i think they'll get better i don't think they're 14th uh, but I do think they need a lot to figure out. They need to be more aggressive, more proactive, making plays. And if that involves Pi Pi and Nico having a shot call, like, or more micromanage the jungle or shot call more or whatever, that's, so be it. Yep, for sure. And, uh, yeah, that's going to cover that series. Moving on to our last Group A match, uh, Rookies and Cream versus Sprinklers Tinklers. Uh, Sprinklers Tinklers taking it to all, all three games. I'll go first. All right, yeah, ha I'll go last. How about that? I'll go last. No. Yeah, no. we let Ray talk at the end, or not Ray, X Ray. I'm, I'm not where Ray. that came from. I'm, I'm thinking Ray. about Ray right now after this series. Okay. Um, I mean, so warranted. warranted. I'll get there. Game one, shocking events uh, to begin with. X Ray did not go uh, jungle. I think everyone was kind of expecting like them to do this kind of roster swap, where like, oh, actually, Sprinkler is gonna go top lane because that's his role, and X Ray is gonna be off role jungle. Uh, so I don't. To me, I, at least, I was shocked when I when I saw that X Ray was going to be going top lane, or, uh, and uh, Sprinkler was sticking with the jungle. Um, game one, the my big note here is wow, Array still looks really good on Huey. Uh, <laughs> we kind of already knew that. So I mean, I'm waiting for it to show up on another champion and like show some carry potential, but I haven't seen it in this league. I haven't really seen it in a Blue Water league. I'm just waiting for him to like really pop off on a carry that isn't Huey. Um, might be a bit of a bit of champion diff, and I don't know if the patch notes will affect him too much. Oh. Um, so, and then the other thing here was it was a very quick soul this game, and it looked like it was like I mean, it's just hard to come back, overcome that. Um, even though they had the soul uh, against them, sprinklers, tinklers, I think fought back really, really well despite being down all game. Um, game two, uh, rookies and cream just kind of like lost this game on second Drake. Like they just went in and had this horrible fight where everyone died. Um, 
they were just like fishing for for like something after their jungler died and there's a nocturne kaisa and galio ult on the other team that can just go on you instantly so i mean you can you, like as soon as your one guy dies you got to get off vision uh but, but against that kind of comp um there was this absolute bounce house fight that was super cool uh definitely deserves like a highlight uh if we're doing highlight reels i don't know if this this split um uh, i think on dragon three and rookies and cream like really didn't want to fight drakes but like they didn't they already gave up two so it's like we have to go commit to this and they just got it was like their entire team was in the air almost the entire fight it was beautiful oh yeah that's um, right i remember that with the, with the, between the the orin galio yeah like you guys can't do anything yeah. um and then i think this game ocean soul seals the deal where it's like either team has a dps problem but because uh big Clear stinkler's got the soul like the other team just no longer touches them i think they, they can't burn through their health bars fast enough um so yeah i mean good fighting from tinklers they secure the 4-0 soul and then the game's completely unlosable and they get their their comeback here um and then game three was just this complete beat down <laughs> and the one thing i'll say is i was really impressed with sprinklers j4 um it's really crazy how much damage the champ actually does when you land your eqs instead of just kind of throwing them and then pressing r um so i'm taking notes myself and we'll, we'll see if i can <laughs> if i can turn jarvan into a, D a dps threat like he did uh yeah completely crazy nice nice played by sprinkler and good showing on uh, their first jungle game in summit all right all right venom go ahead go ahead let uh, hit, hit me with it i'm ready um You'll be surprised with this one. Uh, so I did watch the series. I will. I'll be honest. I didn't watch it very closely. I had it on two x speed while working, while doing stuff for work. Um, so like I, I, I'll be honest. I didn't take notes. But uh, game one, like Paul said, uh, Array's way is insane. I think. I think I did. Uh, I think I did go back to normal speed to hear. I think it was X Ray say like that way is a problem at the end of the game, when the game was over, and he goes, "Damn that!" Uh, he goes, "Damn, Array's way is really good." And so I don't know if you guys banned it the next two. I just didn't. Oh draft, uh, yeah. Draft. I think uh, I think, did, I think but... we, uh, keep talking and I'll let you know. I yeah, have the okay. I have the I have the yeah. drafts. And I and I it got banned. So if you show up, it did get banned. I, yeah. I assume so, but. Um, I think he played Silas Aurora game two three, um, but yeah, no. Overall, I think game one it was a way difference. Like Loco was taking kind of bad trades and kind of screwed Sprinkler on a couple. Like I don't want to say he screwed Sprinkler, but for, because I only had Sprinkler's POV, I could I could see that Sprinkler was like trying to do a play, and then he then he like do like look mid, and his mid was at like ten HP, and then he's like, okay, I can't do that. Like, you could see his camera just move, like, okay, uh, that play, like, I can't contest these. So, um, I think Loco had a, a rough game one on, I think it was Yoni played. Yep. Uh, whether it be because Ray popped off on play, or as well as his Yoni is maybe as good as he um, as he wants it to be. But Ray popped off game one. I don't even think Ray played particularly bad on Silas or uh, Aurora, just, like, he was... Silas and Tagalio, I'm not a mid lane expert, but that sounds like AIDS. That sounds awful to play against. Like, against a Galio mid that's just going to sit there and kind of be Galio. So, um, good pick from Sprinkler Stinklers on to adapt and draft. Uh, put Loco on something a little safer. I know he's off rolling, I think, mid, right? X ray? Uh, yes. Yeah. So he's off rolling. So I think his champ pool will get better over the season. But uh, Galio's, I think, relatively easier and kind of lets Sprinkler um, kind of do what he wants. Let Sprinkler but, tinkle. Yeah, he, it lets Sprinkler, <laughs> it lets Sprinkler tinkle. And, so then, like Sprinkler can go in on plays with Nocturne, and then he just Galio ults and follows. And very easy to execute, I would say, um, to get back in a game two. But hey, X-ray the Orn. Orn's still hitting. I I saw a solo bolo. I think it was game three. I don't think it was game two. But yeah, no, I saw the you. solo bolo. Guys, yeah. you cannot let X-Ray play Orn and get like he will just sit there and play Orn every single game you let him. He does not care if he is called an Orn merchant. He will play it. He will solo kill your top laner. <laughs> And then he'll go solo bolo in the game comms. <laughs> and in chat. On a highlight reel. Just know that. That is what will happen. His orn is lethal. Like okay. Like I said, or, I think your orn popped off game two and three. It made your team fights really good. Um, 
and kind of, I think it just made the team fights easier. You were oh. ahead on Orn, game two and three. The Mordekaiser didn't look bad game one, but um, yeah, it's I... obviously a comfort champ for you is on Orn. So just good team fighting. Uh, I think game three, because it started getting out of hand, I stopped watching. Oh, it was, but, it was a beat down. It was a beat down. Yeah. It was, but I wasn't saw, close. Long enough to see the solo bolo though. So, but yeah, I think the Orn, got, Orn, made, Orn Nocturne, Orn Nocturne Galio is just awful to play against. It, if I was an ADC or a mid laner against that, I would, I would just AFK. That that sounds it, awful. It's because it's so funny because it's like you turn off the lights, a guy is n the shadow is now on you. You're seeing this g giant stone guy slam down, and then you have this terrain coming, going through you, and then it's coming back at you. So it's it's pretty funny actually. Um, Solid performance though by I, I think um, uh, Sprinkler played really well. I think Thim played well. Uh, oh, stayed yeah. alive. Mm. I think they all played pretty well. Oh, that was another thing I wanted to throw in. Uh, was it Thimmy playing Kaisa? Yeah, game two. Yeah, not. I feel like that's not really in his in his pool, but I thought he had a good performance on it. Yeah, he did well. And then um, I had Sexy Shawarma also had a really solid series. Yeah. You know, uh, I literally, I literally said this when we when we when I knew we were gonna have Shawarma as a. As a sub, I was like, "Hey, this is just um, let's run it back. Uh, it's a uh, PTS with uh, without Gar, because <laughs> it we had four of four out of the five players from last season. So I didn't even notice that. <laughs> yeah, we had four out of the five. So I was like, I was like, man, like this synergy is kind of crazy, actually. So, uh, but yeah, I'll just cover my games real quick. I mean, we pretty much covered everything. I mean, game one, array cooking on the way. I mean. That that's all you really gotta know. Um, I think, honestly, I think just um, sprinklers tinklers just not like kind of like what um Soulpan said last series is just the jitters. So we had one game of the jitters, you know, kind of just getting in the feel of everything. Actually, I think this was the first game we actually had them that we played with them as a as our ADC. So. Um, so it was a warm up game, I you you could say, um, and then game two three. Nothing too crazy. I mean, I played Orn Orn Horn for and uh, Loco really good Galio Sprinkler playing really well in the Nocturne and J four, them Kaisa Ezreal nothing too much. Uh, Shwarma, why do people let this guy have Thresh? Because this guy is just crazy on that champion, um, and yeah, I mean. Like you said, you guys pretty much covered everything, and I don't want to gas myself up anymore because. Uh... Uh, game two and three, you can. You popped up. Your orn was. Really oh, good. Uh, one more shout out for a touch of vigor. Uh, oh the team yeah. Almost went crazy. I thought uh, could have been like a crazy game, but just lost it on the dragons too much. I. It's funny because in the power rankings, I actually forgot who I played against. Like all like the rookies, so I kind of felt bad. Um, so. Uh, Hopefully. It's hard. It's a, it's a team full of unknowns. It's, <laughs> it's like why well, we haven't talked much about the rest of them. Just it's like, like okay, don't I really know. Yeah, it's I don't like, know if I know Ray and, I, and uh, Vigor. I think had a really good showing, but like uh, Pat's Thick and uh, Pycronos and uh, Pony. Just I just don't remember you guys. I just don't remember what champions you played or who. Like, Damn. You know, actually, he's top playing Orn. He's not thinking about you guys. Yeah. He's just thinking. So he's just the, the, yeah. I, I just didn't remember your name, Patstick. I only just remember you as Mundo. <laughs> he, don't, he doesn't remember your name because he, all he saw above your head was Airborne. Yeah, well, all, all I saw... I didn't even see you. I didn't even see you because you were dead. Damn. But, uh, that's brutal. I, I will say, Touch Figure did play well. Hey, oh, yeah, for sure. Because the only VOD was from uh, Sprinkler's POV, I have no idea how any of the lanes yeah. went, like... It's, yeah, it's literally a POV. Like Picronus, Pony Gaffo. If you guys watch this, it's like, damn, they didn't say a word about us. It's like we just didn't see you because yeah. the POV was only sprinklers. Yeah, you know what? Let's all clown sprinkler for his bad camera control. <laughs> Look at your lanes, uh, man. Uh, I will say Jason, though, Jason doesn't hit F keys. I'll say that. Uh, back, Jason didn't hit his F keys one time in his, in his <laughs> game. <laughs> I will say, um, Pycronus, um, his game one, he played Kaisa and actually had a really good showing, honestly. I do remember the Kaisa game one, because, like, I was trying to defend, like, them on the board, like, just ult someone. 
to like then want to just die on re uh, like instantly um but kaisa was just ring in onto them and just one-shotting him so i do remember the kaisa and it was looked pretty solid so hopefully you can uh bring or replicate then your upcoming matches um but let's move on to our next series which we're not i don't really have a whole lot of information on oh i can talk to it a little i watched part of jerboas yeah right i watched i did watch it too it. but i like i just didn't see it i like i i watched some of it and then i left the vod and then i tried to come back and then i there was no vod so um but alan and the chipmunks versus wawa warriors uh i didn't have a vod so i don't really have a whole lot to base it on of off of um but wawa warriors 2-0 uh, alan and the chipmunks um so Venom, yeah. share, 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 share the thoughts. Yeah, I have the scoreboards that Baratel sent me today as well. Um, yeah, I like I don't want to trash him too hard, but King Catterwall and Light kind of got lit up, pun intended. Like <laughs> they got demol. A Azrael and Sifra took them to the cleaners. Uh, game one, Varus was nine two and twelve. My hot daddy went nine two and eleven mid. Uh, so they just kind of clapped them in general. Um, yeah, that one was, it, like, I, like, I, I obviously couldn't watch, I didn't watch, like, the team fights and stuff, so maybe these kills weren't in lane. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, bot lane went 10-4 in 24 game one on Poppy Varus, and then game two they went, Kaisa went 6-2-9, Milia went 0-0-18, uh, wow. Catterwall and Light went 0, 9, and 6 combined. Game I'll just two. throw this in just so we have a better idea of expectation. King Catterwall Light Spear was ranked number one pretty much consistently across the board for our first week's power rankings. Asurl and Sifra were fifth. Yeah, um, and people are still putting Sifra 10th in their support power rankings. I, Which is, I, I, I'm not going to say he's, yes, he's the best, but that is, it, like, if it is insane. Like, he is, like I said, the fact that he is number 10 after they took the quote-unquote best bot lane to the cleaners, like, yes, Astral is probably the, like, head and shoulders best ADC this season, right? I think most people agree Astral is, like, he's he's him at ADC. But, like, you need a good support, even with a, like, if your ADC is good, because... I think King Catterwall and Lightspear are double masters bot lane. Mm -hmm. Like, if at Astral, if he has, like, a bad support, a double masters bot lane can punish that support and win a lane. Like, if it's, let's say it's, like, me or something. Like, if We've it's me it before. Astral, that bot lane's crushing me. Like, I'm going 0-10 on Thresh, straight up, <laughs> if I'm playing against that bot lane, even with Astral, who's very good at the game, mm -hmm. right? So, um... I will say, well, during the watch party for Power Rankings, I did forget who his ADC was and what team he was on and said that he was an average bot lane because <laughs> I mixed him up with uh, Mattia, which is Power of Friendship's ADC support. I mixed him up with Ilya, and I thought um... Ilya and Zephyr were the same person. Like, I just mixed him up. Mm. So, uh, but yeah, no, I think he he deserves a little respect. Um Obviously, there's no VOD, so a lot of people just didn't see the series. But, right. No, it was kind of a bot diff. And it's kind of a crusty trap repeat for Gator, unless they turn it around. Um, I I, I, I said that la I said that last week in the like like the yeah. draft and like it it pretty much is, and it's just because like Doki, you know, you're you're auto filled top lane, so you, I'm not expecting a whole lot. I mean. Uh, I will say, though, I think Vossler, like, what gameplay I did see from his POV looked actually really good. Like, he, he was farming really well on the Orianna, you know, having really good trades um, and everything like that, so... I, I think him being off-roll, he is not comfortable in playing mid. I don't mm. think he played poorly, but I don't... There's things that you have to do as mid laner that, like, you just don't know. Like, roam timings, when to follow, when to go for objectives, like... Mm -hmm. Stuff like that kind of is where Vossler is going to need to improve this season. Mechanically, he's fine. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and I think I think on because it was his POV, I think he would agree that he needs to get a little more comfortable mid. But this team, I, I don't want to say they're the Krusty Trap already, 
but they can turn it around. I think King Catterwall and White Sphere, I think if this whole team practices, I think they can be good, right? They played against arguably one of the better bot lanes, probably one of like the top two bot lanes, I would say, uh, top two, three bot lanes mm -hmm. in the league. So you played against one of the best. Now you have to show that you can beat like Nico Spirit Man, Thim Ender Fridge, Jason Brissy, Yahoozy Barbecue. Like, just show that you could be win the lanes against other worse bot lanes, and they should be fine. Yeah, but, I'm actually excited to yeah. see King Catterwall versus uh, Nico bot lane wise. I'm interested to see how like that matchup yeah. goes. Um, but um, Soulpan, do you have anything on this series? Uh, not much to add. I mean. Um... Didn't get to, you know, I didn't get to watch this one. Uh, so, yeah. I, I also all, all I'll say is that I mean I don't I'm not willing to call it a repeat of the Krusty Trap just yet as well. Oh. Uh, I think I think Vossler. I think it's has an gotta upgrade. Be an upgrade. It's an upgrade yeah. of the Krusty Trap, but it's like there's upgrades in all roles. Genuinely, yeah, I think it's I think it's just uh, like copy paste but improve it basically. So the same format, but the league yeah. has also gotten yeah. better as a whole. Um, yeah. So, but like I said, I believe in Gator. I think Gator will, you know, he'll put the time in to practice with his team and get that synergy and stuff. Like, I, I, I'm not ready to say they're going to go 0-10 or what. I actually, oh. I'll throw this out there. Gator's the one on this team that actually needs to level up. Um, because you compare, Whoa. not because he's a bad player. No, 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 no. Listen, not okay. because he's a bad player. It's just because the of the, all the roles, uh, in terms of, like, where everything is at, Jungle's the one that's now the most competitive. So... In order for this team to be the Krusty Trap, which was a top tier jungler and a top tier bot lane, OT Gator's the one who actually needs to improve the most. Uh, he's got to climb these power. He's got to like climb solo queue, climb some power rankings, and just shut down some other junglers because like he's got to be the guy for this team. I think. Okay, never mind. I I kind of forgot. Like, there's like fourteen bajillion diamonds in this uh, in the jungle yeah. This season. <laughs> he, did, he did dodge. I would say most of the top jungles. He dodged Morn. Only yeah, his group. He dodged Hootie. He dodged Morn. He dodged Fall. No, no, Sprinkler, he didn't dodge me. He dodged Bouncy Knight. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> Bouncy Knight. He, he dodged Bouncy. <laughs> I will say it doesn't mean his group is easy. Touch Vigor, Firestorm, uh, Sprinkler. I'd say Adolfo Kittler is pretty good. Gourmet, if he can puts the time in, I think his him yeah. swapping roles do good. It's not to say his group's easy, but like I would say the top top jungle is of like Hootie and Morn and. I'll put Paul up there because he's my friend. But those <laughs> are <pretty laughs> top jungle. Fr friend We're ranking. Really nice friend guy. ranking. Let's go. Not because he's good or anything like that. <laughs> well, Paul's good too. I, I've known Paul for a long time. I know he's good. Um, but yeah, let's move on um, to our next series. Elo Surfers versus the Gauntlet. Uh, ooh, Venom's Venom's ready yeah. to go. Do you do you want to lead Venom? Let speak for me. <laughs> hey, how about Venom? How, how about you lead on this one? Because I'm I'm. Let's hear it. Number one, Elo Surfer fan, <laughs> clock it in here. Um, no, I think Gumby absolutely shit stomped. Never saw like in game one and three. Game two, he played Victor and Cassidy, which is kind of a snoozer. But Zed v Nasus, he popped off that game and was he was carrying sidelines. He was dodging 1v3 gang. Like, he played as expected. Hey, this is your zero-point challenger. He needs to carry, and I think he did. And then the GP game... Oh, sorry. I, correction. He did not lane against Neversaw game three. He went top GP. I have I have one question before before you continue. Yeah. Is this the one series you just went full depth on, and you just kind of two times... <laughs> All, every other one but you, oh, you no, put I watched one this time. one live oh like five, okay there was like four series that were all at the same time while i was at the gym this one was its own time like the day before okay okay so i'm so i was just what, making like, sure we, we so got our facts one, straight just because you so were the, you're the eel surfers this, fan yeah i think it was this one and there was uh final boss that, and power friendship oh, power yeah those two series i was able to watch the whole thing because they were their own time and I was home watching them. So that is why I know more about those. The rest I had to watch like yesterday or the day before. Okay. But, okay. No, I, I was just, um, I was just curious, you know, it's yeah, like, cause, like cause you culture. are the number one Eel Surfers fan. So I am trust me, but yeah. So sorry. <laughs> Correction. Game three, Gumby went top against 
It was Orn. It was Cap. It was a Cap Cat as Orn. Orn. Yeah. Yeah, and he was playing GP, so he just sat there and farmed. (laughs) Yeah, that's that's a really hard matchup. CS a minute. I think he was at one point like a 10 to 11 CS a minute on GP. Um, but no, uh, never saw got giga gapped game one. I think she egoed him and Gumby egoed her back and just his, he just played better. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'm trying to think of the rest of that sporadic PPP, I think played pretty well all three games. Um, mm-hmm. considering you're playing against a fed Zed, um, I'm trying to think of the champs exactly. I don't. Uh, they played like game one. Uh, yeah, here one second. Uh, game one, they played. Play uh, they played. I think Ash Maokai. I think. I can't yeah. remember the ADC, but it was Maokai something, and I think it was Ash. And then uh, I don't remember game two, but I think game three was pretty much similar to game one. It was Ash something. I just can't remember the. Okay. Support yeah. off the top of my head. That makes sense. So, Isodick, please ban his Zach. Please ban his Zach. He played <laughs> don't ban his Zach. Games. Don't listen to him. No. He played, <laughs> hey, yeah. Please don't if I want him to win. They, he played in all three games. He is the lowest ELO player. I don't know if in Summit this season, but one of the no, lower ELO he, players. I think it's, he's I like think bronze it's, or silver, isn't he? It's got to be the jungler for... Um, I won't back down. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I think he's. I think he's close. I think isn't Isodic silver? Or is he higher? He looks. Uh, he's silver right now, but like peaked me, plat. Okay. Oh, I can I can look at the draft right board. Now. Keep going. Yeah. So I think Isodic Zach. He is very comfortable on it, and he played very well on it. All things considered. Um, but Bouncy played so fucking well. He. I think his Skarner was like fourteen and two. His Kane game, I think it was Kane game two, was like nine and three. Like, hmm. even in a losing effort, he still played extremely well. So, I think, I think Bouncy is an incredible sub. I'm sure if he was picked up on a team, he'd be incredible on that team. I think if this mid jungle just beat um, Kib Cat never saw, and then Mr. Wiz Wiz never saw because they swapped top and jungle. But um, the Gauntlet has to figure it out. Uh, sporadic in PPP, they're a decent, they're a pretty good bot lane, but they're not going to win against like top bot lanes mm. um, in general. Uh, but yeah, I think I think never saw. She got camped on on uh, Smolder. Yep. But uh, my king gamer destroyer flash Maokai old Maokai or sorry flash Maokai W Maokai W Maokai W every single time on her head. All game three, so uh, okay. Glaze aside, I think Elo Surfers looked good. Um, I think Bouncy played well. He has a different style than Paul, so it'll be interesting to see when Paul comes back um, how they play with Paul ver- with Paul and Gumby in that mid jungle versus Bouncy. Um, but overall, fun series to watch. Uh, never saw. Please don't be bored next time you're playing game one. I beg you, um, even though she won't face a mid lane, probably as good as going to be the rest of this tournament. Uh, but no, I think it was a fun series. I think the gauntlet's pretty good. I I think even though they they lost 2-1, I think if they figure out how like their game plan, they, they can be a pretty good team. Sure. Yeah. Got and a Gamer Destroyer Affection bot lane, the biggest vibe bot lane in existence. Best Synergy also. Uh, best Synergy team. Sure. Um, but yeah, uh, Eel Surfers, really good series. Um, game one, it was 36 to 7, by the way, for game one. Uh, Bouncy, I think, had like half of those or something like that, or a third of them. I think he had like 13 kills or something like that, and like 17 assists or something like that. He had a he was doing bomb. Um, game two, uh, I don't know why I put the whole game doesn't matter in my notes, but I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> It was a Cassidy uh, yeah. classic. Yeah, I Cassidy hit 30, sixteen, Cassidy, and the game yeah. just got really hard for Elo. All of a sudden, Cassidy was just one shotting people, and it was uh, very scary. Um, but Cena Kipcat swap. Uh, I know Cena went into the jungle and played Skarner, tried to recreate what Bouncy did game one, and uh, kind of did it. It just kind of was just a tank. Uh, and I I just want to talk about the big team fight. Um. 
at the very end is um uh, bronstein i think kind of the g in this one is uh catches affection and gumby with the ultimate of skarner and actually pulls affection out of the tark ultimate like last second and they blow up you know uh affection and then uh you know the tark ult runs out and then they just kill gumby and then it's no one can really carry from that point on so i'm just gonna piggyback off this really quick because i had notes about this fight too it was it was a cinema cinematic fight ppp hits a perfect poppy ult to throw out the cane uh manages to dash over the wall onto a champion as well skarner hits like a three-man ult uh it wasn't someone else was flanking over that wall too with um with ppp it was beautiful it was so well done and not only did they deny the den- deny a soul but they won the game off this play too so yep. it was just like it was a beautiful team fight to close out game two yep for sure um and then game three i i said to be honest game one on repeat never saw uh heavily and i put that in caps by the way heavily focused this game like I think left lane, it was like one and seven or something like that. Like she got really like three man on repeat. It's like if if Gamer D was on a roam timer, he was mid lane when in doubt. And uh, honestly, they might have been able to bring it back, but it was going to be a really rough one. I think like Smolder had to basically not die for the rest of the game. So and just try to execute. He was mega fed. Yeah. GP free farmed for like 20 minutes. Over 10 I, CS did, was getting Did he go grasps? Oh, yeah, he did go grasps. Uh, GP went grasps. I, if he went, it. yeah, if he went to uh, like, uh, not collector, um, first strike, oh man, he would have been rolling in cash so much. Josiah played well too. Josiah yeah, for sure. Josiah game three was pretty solid. Um, probably his best game is on AD that was game three um but yeah um soul pan your thoughts on this one yeah i mean i i only got to watch game one live um and i never watched it back the rest of the series but when i remember like i saw zed in anastas and i was like oh no like <laughs> this, this series this first game's not gonna go very well but i mean gumby showed me that zed can do a lot more than i thought uh made some absolutely disgusting like mind-boggling plays uh i was watching i think his pov it's mm. just like crazy what he's doing on the champ um affection and gamer d also had a really really good game one i think um affection looked pretty pretty good on the kaisa um and I'll, i will say like even though like watching this entire game and like having the advantage that uh, elo surfers did i like was i said this worry in the back of my head that was like oh, i never saw nasus is gonna get some stacks they're gonna get enough she's gonna get enough stacks and then she's gonna be in the side lane and no one's gonna be able to answer her and i swear like there's one moment that nasus had where it was like it looked like nasus would just bonk two people and just get a double kill i was like oh no here it comes uh but ended up like getting shut down just enough um so i mean like thanks to the performance gumby had in mid i think that nasus just ended up not getting to play that game mm-hmm. um game two casted in classic uh never saw even like a really cheeky solo kill it's pretty sick um and i, I just had like these, this flashback to solo queue where people play like when there's a casted in, in the game like like he's not in the game. Like there isn't just this ticking time bomb that's gonna like just show up, uh, teleport three times to your fight that you're having at like two HP, and just like staring at the other player because you're too afraid to go in, and they're too afraid to go in. He'll show up and take the kill, and then Cassidy ends up with like eleven kills before uh, twenty minutes, and all of a sudden the game's just completely lost. Um, like it really just looked like once Cassidy had sixteen, like there was not gonna be an answer. Mm-hmm. Um, I will also say like I think PPP and Sporadic had a really good showing in this game. Um kind of showing like what they can do uh and then game three uh, that lane swap came out of nowhere <laughs> i don't know what the idea was but i mean they got gangplank it was just like a, a war of the two scaling lanes where gangplank got a scaling lane against the tank and never saw got a scaling lane against uh zach mid on smolder so i mean like who's gonna scale up first luckily there's a lot more access to mid uh for elio surfers so i mean gamer d showed up 20 times uh, I mean, never saw us committing like war crimes against uh, poor Isodidact on the Zac. He's just ranged top into <laughs> melee, or melee, t- melee, uh, like jungle top champ into uh, sm- range smolder. It just looked rough. And then just the entire Geneva convention showed up in mid lane to uh, <laughs> make things a little bit better. I think um, the other thing is, is like Smolder doesn't have an escape besides like I mean his little flyaway, if you want to call that an escape. And then uh, what does GP have? Orange. 
Yeah, and like also the GP ult worked getting thrown mid all game too, so it was pretty sick. Yeah. Um, the other thing that happened was it was uh, let's see, Orn Sedge in your other uh, as your top jungle, and then Ash Seraphine. These aren't really good champs at capitalizing on a power vacuum. So even though they're sending all these people to mid, it's not like Orn can push down a tower. It's not like Seraphine Ash is gonna very quickly like put some threat on someone. They have good engage range, but I mean, I think if Ash played very safe and just made sure that he wasn't gonna be like threatened. Uh, get just uh, completely destroyed in the bottom lane so i mean it is best there um and then the only other note i have is i've got some big shoes to fill uh and Hunting <laughs> made a really good case here to uh that they should have been drafted this season so i mean hopefully they'll come back next season wait we'll get to get to play yeah they, were, they didn't sign up right i thought uh, they did am i wait oh am, am boy I no else? bouncy night <gasps> wait he actually got drafted he did he went undrafted yeah he got they got passed over in the draft so this was a jungle that anyone could have picked up <laughs> wow listen L listen sultan uh he better do good this week you might get i know off. you might get i know off. i'm gonna get rule 4.3.1 invoked <laughs> get knocked <laughs> off my roster uh but uh That's yeah strange. Let us move on to our next series, uh, Final Voss versus Power of Friendship, and I was uh, not very. I was kind of surprised uh, it going two zero to Power of Friendship. I thought I'd at least go to three games, um, but Final Boss not looking really clean, not looking the best. Um, DV really big lead in that top lane, uh, Goblin getting an early lead. Um, in the early game, but getting blown out by Slop and Psy with the Ori Nock combo. Um, Nocturne, I think, had the most um, impact this game, in my opinion. I think Slop, you know, you literally just press R and you're on someone. And depending on, like, how your team is able to respond to that ultimate, um, I think Power of Friendship did really well, you know, responding to that, especially with the Oriana. I mean... You throw the ball in Nocturne and just R whenever you hit someone. And you basically blow someone up. Um, and then game two, final boss, early lead. Uh, but players getting caught before team fights And side just getting all the gold on the... I think it was Huey, if I'm not mistaken. Was playing Huey that game. Uh, and then split pushing, honestly, won them the game. Uh, really good plays. And that's really all I got for, the, for this series. Because uh, I, I don't want to beat a dead horse. Because I know Rob was really tilted after this game. <laughs> so, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's hear from Soulpan. Yeah, I didn't know we had some crazy insider info. Um, Ooh. From you. Oh. That, that was oh. you. I didn't know Rob was tilted. Well, it's okay. It's only because we were going to play uh, uh, Baldur's Gate 3. And he actually just straight up left the group. He was like, yeah, I'm not feeling it. And then left the group. So uh, Damn. And Ryan's uh, also in the group, and he's like, yeah, he's uh, he's not in the mood. Um, so I think my notes here are... <laughs> I'm actually need... I need Patrick to go. Sorry, give me a second. Oh, you want me to go? Yeah, let's okay. hear Venom. Let's hear yep. you, Venom. Uh, I don't... I, don't uh, I, I was joking. I'm beating a dead horse. But yeah, I think overall... Um, David kind of... Like, Asuna, I think, is a very solid player. But David is going to do some shenanigans top, no matter what. Like, I think he played, what, Mordekaiser game one and then Yorick game two. I think he was one in four on Yorick, but he'd pushed both t tier one and tier two, had a 40 CS lead, and was, like, doing, in typical David fashion, getting four manned, and then pinging every single summoner and going, flash down, ignite down, flash down, they're four top, please do something, like... Uh, which David has done since I've known him and when we played in tournaments at U of I. So, um, so no, I think David uh, did what he had to. He he like he played really well top, uh, had leads. Like I said, the Mordekaiser, one of his big uh, one of his favorite picks, as well as Yorick, Sai, uh, Ori looked strong. And I forgot what they played game. Was it? I thought I it thought it, was it? I thought it was Ori, um, but I could be wrong. I think Ori was. Oh, it was. Or not Ori. Ori uh, Hue. I thought it was Hue. Was um, it Hue game two? That that would make sense. Hold up. Um, hold up. Oh no, he it, Hue got banned. It was Silas. There you go, Silas. Okay. Yeah. So Sai is just. Or oh, sorry, no. Really uh, sorry. Um, Sai was playing Gwen mid lane. Oh, that was the Gwen. Yeah. Um, Sai had a rough early lane, but I think Silas. 
might beat Gwen early. I don't know. Some high elo player can say actually in the trash talk, whatever. <laughs> actually. But, uh, yeah, but so I played really well. Uh, they tr they just kept trading kills randomly mid with Hamea, um, and I would prefer my high elo player with more kills because they can usually do more with gold than low elo. Not saying Hamea is low elo, but lower rank. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think mid top kind of just played better. Um, jungle, I think Marcus or Slot Maestro, also known as Zilla. Uh, Played really well in the Nocturne. Got Psy put the put the ball on Marcus. Marcus went in. They got like three four man Orioles. I think there was a mid fight that they got a three man and Rob got almost one shot. And he, like he walked towards the fight. Nocturne ultis him, one shots him, and then he probably went. I can't like I'm done. I can't do anything. Um, yeah, team fights so, yeah, over. I think it was, Exactly. Like, I think in Mattia or, um, God, what's his username? Um, they're AD. Sauce of Legend. Yeah, Sauce. Um, yeah, I think Sauce of Legend and Ilya, I think, uh, yeah. they played well bought. Like, they're expected to get crushed in that lane, right? Like, Rob, Garrett have played hundreds of games together. Rob's the better ADC. I would. I think Ilya and Garrett might be close to even it in rank. I think Ilya I think might so. be D two P. Uh, yeah, I think actually, yeah, I think Ilya's. Ranked yeah, I think Ilya's technically higher. higher rank than Garrett. Uh, but, yeah, but, yeah. Okay, so slightly higher rank than Garrett. So I'll, I'll say it's similar to a wash at support, but better AD. So, mm. um, I think they just played like they like Rob didn't play bad. He had leads. Just yep. the leads were not enough to overcome David and Sai winning their solo lanes and when you're an ad and they're playing mordekaiser oriana nocturne like it doesn't matter unless you're like giga fed you are not gonna win that like you're gonna have a bad time and he got nocturne ori ultied probably five times in a row and he can't do anything he got mordekaiser ultied and then david with rylai stood on top of rob's head and then cued him over and over so um I think they have a lot to learn from these games. I think they have a lot to grow from it. Uh, I, like I said, I don't. I think this is spectate link. I don't think this is a POV stream, but yeah, it I think spectator. they'll get better. I think they'll get better. I think they just had a. I think also being everybody saying like, oh, they're gonna crush, they're gonna win, they're one of the top teams. I think is a, quite a bit of pressure, um, because that like expectation of like, hey. Rob, Rob and Ryan were on a team, and they won two years. Like Rob Ryan and Asuna were on the Roblins Goblins team that won. It's like you guys got a. It's like Rob's won twice, Ryan's won three times, and like everyone's saying you're one of the best teams. I think there is a degree of pressure, um, especially going into week one, um, that people do not talk about. But I think they'll be fine. Well, and I think like the other thing is like. Um... Kind of like I said in the uh, first episode of The Climb is like you don't have one of the biggest pieces of Robin's Goblins, which is Dean, you know, and like Alturus has a very large shoes to fill in that department. Um, but I think like I think this is just a bump week. I think like, you know, just kind of find that groove back, you know, find, you know, you have a different mid laner, but you basically have three of the same players from Robin's Goblins. So you just find what works and uh, find that rhythm again. So, And POF is good. POF's yeah. Strong. P POF is really good, especially with, you know, how David's been playing, you know, less of, like, tanks just because of how he, how the rest of this, uh, like, his group lanes. Like, he's better than not most of these guys besides Owen. Um, and then same thing with size. Like, besides Gumby and Never Saw, like, Psy should wall up pretty much anyone on this, uh, in this, uh, pool. So, but we'll see. But let's move on to Go our... Oh. oh, wait, Paul, Paul didn't... Go oh, off. sorry, Paul! Sorry. Sorry, we're, I, was, we're... I was literally choking. I, I <laughs> forgot, I, for, I, I said Paul, and then he said he's dying, and then I was like, alright, Venom, and then, he, yeah, so, uh, Paul, 
Anyways, game one, uh, really strong dive comp identity from POF here. Uh, I think it's really cool seeing DV and Sai have this built-in synergy. Um, and I think DV is also very happy. Uh, Chen's not exactly a carry. Uh, DV can play carry threats on this team because he has Sai. So it's really nice to have that secondary carry on your team where you're not like the only high rank player. Um, we'll also throw in that I don't think the ADC meta maybe is like super favorable to Goblin. Uh, Kaisa and Callista don't really feel like they're super in his wheelhouse. I know he's like adaptable as a player. Um, but he's always seemed to strike me as like the kind of person who wants to play Twitch, Kogma, and have a Lulu and chill. Um, so I mean, like in this game, it was really hard for um, Final Boss to make plays. There's just so much range on the other team to support. That you just like you try and do something, and then there's a Nocturne ult and a Caitlyn ult and a Shen ult, and then you're needing to run away before, and then like wait out those cooldowns, and then wait for the next opportunity. Just like very small windows in which you can make plays. Um, but I, that, all that like. There were still some really good plays in this first game for Final Boss to try and stay in the game. Uh, but Soul goes over. Uh, Power Friendship got their legs under them and finally got like a 5 versus 5 team fight. And it just, the game was over. Um, game 2, uh, the big standout for me was actually Slot Maestro shadowing Sai Gwen on the Amumu. Um, I thought that was, it was like these crazy like chain CC setups um, where uh, Hamia just couldn't like keep up with all the CC being and damage being thrown at them. Uh, and also, the standout to me this game was that Sai was playing not control mages. I always just assumed they were a control mage player. Um, so, I mean, picking up the Gwen and then popping off as hard as uh, they did on it was pretty sick. Mm -hmm. I think DV got a little silly on the Yorick this game and maybe had a few unnecessary deaths. Um, so, I kind of want him to clean that up a little bit because I know that he can do or do be a better side lane threat than he was this game. Um, I also want to note that I don't think the series score really shows how close this was. It was a 2-0, but it final boss had this crazy comeback in game one that got slapped down by like a five-man shockwave. And then uh, really good early lead in game two. Um, and this time it got shut down by uh, the jungle mid duo, Slot Maestro, coming in crazy on the Amumu. Um, so even though they had the Silas, like, you know, sometimes the champion that has the ultimate built into the kit is built around that ultimate, and they're just a little better at using it. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I, I I literally forgot what I was gonna say, but uh, yep, totally spaced. But that's fine. We'll just move on to the next game. Um, so okay. our la last last sorry last series, um, a thousand year dynasty versus World Soup Center. Uh, another three game series. Uh, thousand year dynasty taking it um, um, over World Soup Center. Uh, game one, fifty five minute game. Uh, Loon was subbed out, a uh, big dummy step into the ADC role, which was definitely new for me at least. Um, but listen, Loon, if, if something goes wrong or something like that, you need to play s support. I think big, big dummy's got it. So, uh, and then, um, R world tube center. I don't think it's the, the, it was their best work. Um, but you know, I still think. It was uh it was pretty good showing. I mean, big dummy just really big on the Zaya. Which I I don't really have any other words for for this game besides it was long and it was hard to watch sometimes <laughs> to get through it. So uh, game two, uh, literally just the Owen show. The Aatrox was crazy. So I had I decided to put some stats here for for you guys. So Owen, if you didn't watch it, here's what Owen went 17 0 and 13 in in the in the game uh 85.7 kill participation 8.4 cs per min was 44k damage the next closest was soup which had 19k damage so he was well over double everyone in the game so and i'm pretty sure if you went back and added all of uh a thousand year dynasties like uh like damage it would it i think it was over but like it was not gonna be it, it was gonna be close basically um also world soup center really good game on the ari um i know game one he played nico and did not do well uh he did not really have a good showing on like one of his signature picks so but you know i think he'll bounce back for sure and he did in the game too and then game three, Owen on the Camille, really big lead. Um, uh, SK Evaps, though, really good game in the Gwen jungle. Uh, you know, Gwen coming out um, two series in a row. 
and just whoever's playing it just show, showing a really good showing of like what this champion could do uh and then just like really good team fights um with a thousand year dynasty just you know finding the the key plays you know killing owen before um really focusing targets you know like they're calling out it's like hey we need to focus this guy this guy this guy and then they just win the team fight and you know they have the objectives and won the series i do think though i think world soup center is definitely going to be uh gonna have a bounce back um i think owen and hootie are definitely one of the strongest top jungle duos in the whole league like not even a question to me so i'm expecting them to bounce back i don't know if it's going to be this week because i don't remember who they're or i think they're playing power of friendship actually so but we'll get that to prediction so no they're not they're not power friend uh no power of friendship just played wawa warriors uh oh that's right um yeah, <laughs> yeah th that game already happened uh, good thing we got predictions in because so, uh <laughs> they play final boss world soup center plays final boss. oh that's right so yeah i i think owens owen hootie are pretty much going to try to run it back game uh, like they did game two um but Wait for asana yeah yeah asana listen man good luck um the one other player I do want to talk about before I give it over to you guys is uh, actually VLN. V very last nerve. Uh, we talked about him in the power rankings, you know. This is his first game in Summit. And for your first game in Summit, you have to play against Owen. Like, what a way to introduce him to Summit. Be like, hey, by the way, um, so for your first week, you have to have to play against uh, probably the best top laner Summit has ever had. So, uh good luck pal um but he actually had a really good showing honestly he put he got his signature pit all three games set um and honestly there was a couple really good plays by him so uh i'm expecting yeah, some he, more from him just that he came in a lane hurting but i still saw some really good punches and team fights that were just chunking people yeah yeah i'm i'm expecting more from him. if he's gonna keep playing like uh like the way he did uh i i think he's gonna He's gonna, he's gonna actually have a punch up, no pun intended. So, uh, but yeah, uh, let's send it over to uh, Venom, and then we'll wrap up with Sulpin. Yeah, I, I, I do agree that VLN had some good plays. Um, and this is with all a hey, peace and love VLN, but it was rough. Like <laughs> I, I, I get it. Owen's good. I hit he, like I, so. I was watching uh, Spectate POV. I think it was it was his friends that were streaming it, um, and they were joking that by game three they're like, "Oh my god, he got his second kill of the series!" <laughs> like halfway through. Uh... Like I said, Owen is a monster. Um, it was rough. I think he got Flame Horizon at 13 minutes and was like one in. It was like 0 and six in like one, like game two. It was, like, it was bad. It, was it, bad. It, it was rough. He did have good team fights, which, you know, is a good thing. Like if you're that far behind, you better be useful in team fights, which I think he was. I think he was. I think he still played yeah. team fights relatively well. Uh, he kept a good like good attitude about it. Like. He probably went in knowing like, okay, this guy's GM peak. Like he's about to slap, like he's about to slap me around for three games. Uh, but he he kept, he kept in it. He kept team fighting. Um, I don't know. Obviously the comms I didn't listen to, but I'm sure he's somewhat still upbeat. Um, I think this team is a lot of VLN people, like from that the that um, league. Well, not Luton, but I actually uh... no, it's not. It's just I think him and Evaps, right? Uh, I no, I think and, v and VLN. Yeah, yeah, VLN, SK Evaps, oh, and I him? think Loon is actually also from VLN is as well. From... Yeah. So, yeah. but uh, but yeah, no, I think game one, big dummy. I didn't watch the whole game. I saw a big dummy went like twenty six and four or so, like so maybe not that good, but he popped off on ADC. Big it, surprise, surprise! Somebody who peak challenger support can also play ADC proficiently against people that are lower elo. Right, and he's pretty damn good at it. So, um, I think he showed why he's worth zero points. And so, um, and that bubbles. I think it was bubbles the who subbed at support for Luton, yeah, uh, or who subbed for Luton and then played support. Uh, played solid as a sub. Um, again, Owen game two, like X-ray said, seventeen and zero. I think Hootie was also like. 
It was like eight and three or something like that. Uh, like wins now, so yeah. it's like, okay, your top jungle is combined like, what, twenty five and three. Uh, yeah, I, the, the top again. side was crazy. I think yeah, like I if if it was total, it was like seventeen, eight, and seven is just your top side, and then I don't know what your bot side what lo was looking like, but yeah, it was. Yeah, it was looking then, pretty easy for... I will say, even with that, Luton... I think Luton is one of the best low elo player, Like, lower elo. Like, I think he's still Emerald. No, he's um, Diamond. He's a is Diamond. He diamond peak yeah, he's a, di he he's a D4. Season? He's a D4. He was ranked D4 this season. Okay. So, they, I, I was thinking he was Emerald when he got drafted last season. Uh, not, He probably not... was, but I that think... That was true. Yeah, uh, okay. but like he okay. he has oh improved God. a lot. Yeah, Luton is I think what like D four is still lower compared to you know top ADC like Azrael, right. Rob and stuff. But for the lower ish ranking ADC, he is insane. He was like even though Owen was seventeen and zero or whatever game two, he was still playing Jinx and still team fighting extremely well uh, on Jinx. I. Honestly, I think it's worth a Jinx ban against him. His he played Jinx, I think, game two and three, both games he played, mm -hmm. and it was very good. Game three, I, I don't he didn't solo carry game three, but I think with a, a different A D, I don't think they win that. Luton played out of his mind in team fights, uh, staying away from like Camille E, kiting out Camille ults, like like when he gets ulti like he played out of his mind, so um, shout out to Luton, and I think Big Dummy, um, he did what he's supposed to, he's really good, he helped Luton, he enabled Luton to play as, like, as well as he did, so, mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people thinking, like, oh, Rob Dean, insane bot lane, it was, but Luton, Luton's pretty good, Luton's looking very strong right now, so, um, I think, I think against teams that don't have as good of top, top jungles, I think, like they could do a lot better. Like the Gauntlet, for example, their top jungle is not nearly as strong. Uh, so mm -hmm. SKE Vaps and VLN don't have to go against double GM top jungle or GM masters. That, but no, good performance by Luton. Um, fun series to watch. Owen's still a monster. He's still number one top later. Um, yeah. That's for sure. Yeah, Paul. I've got very little to add here. All right. be quick, but I mean, I don't think game one's kind of a wash. It was just a sub game and complete pop off uh, by Big Dummy. <laughs> uh, game two, uh, this is the closest we've ever come to a tactical nuke in Summit. So, I mean, we'll keep our eyes out for it, but we're still waiting for 24 kills. They could have extended the game. I mean, it was 25 minutes. A few more, and they, I think, I think Owen would have had it. Um, <laughs> and then uh, the only other note here is that I think uh, World 2 actually had a really good setup on the Ari to enable. Um, the Aatrox being just find, finding really good like flank angles and engages with the charms. Um, and then game three, my only note here, kind of adding on to what Pat said, I don't know, I'm really trying to figure out what the problem was here. Um, they had a really good dive comp with Camille uh, to try and get on Luton's Jinx. Luton was just positioning like a main, like it was perfect every single time. So I don't know if the dive was just uncoordinated and there, and it's like it's one of those pre, you know first game jitters or whatever. Um, but it was, if you ever... If you guys want to listen to like some cool comms, like listen to the comms for this game during fights and listen to how their team is talking about playing around Jinx, who they are playing for, who they are targeting, what they need to watch out for. It was incredible comms mm -hmm. and it shows in the positioning of the team fights. So it was just a really, really cool game to watch. Um, yeah, shout out Luton. I don't know. I, and again, another thing here, I don't know if it's Luton or if it's Big Dummy that's like micromanaging him somehow or mind controlling him to play this well. Uh, but certainly Goblin's looking a little worse for wear after the breakup. Um, <laughs> Big Dummy 69 still <laughs> popping off, so we'll see. Uh, that's all I got for this game. Wow, that's that. That was a crazy statement. Yeah, I do want to point out real quick. I I will say some of the um, Owen did get caught a couple times in the Camille game. Um, yeah. He just got. It was just he was going for a play. Uh, I don't know if it was a vision thing that they just didn't have enough vision or information, but there was a couple times he would like jump in and then like three people would pop out and then it's like ah, oh, Camille's dead. 
I just I just think yeah. for like game three specifically, like because it was it was like a really good di- dive comp. You know, you had Camille, J four, and Galio, so it's like you, you have that co- easy combo, right? But it's like I think it's like they blow everything on Loon or you know someone, and then you wouldn't have anything else for you know anyone else, and so a lot of times you know Loon would die, um, and then like you said, the Gwen would just you know just run everyone else down, basically. And so, but that will wrap up uh, week one games. So let's head over to uh, predictions. So I'll be honest, no one really had a good week for predictions this last week. It was bad. Um, special guest, special Woo! guest, special guest logic coming through, getting four for three. Um, everyone else in the negative, especially me, I got one right. It was my own game. I predicted Sprinkler Sneakers, and I got it right. I got every other game wrong. It was bad. So, uh, but yeah, everyone else looking pretty solid. Um, not in a terrible spot, but going for or hair. I just wanted to show everyone. Uh, we got the poster. Uh, it's right here into the camera. There it is. There you go. And there's a camera right there. So, uh, it, Brissy is on my wall. It's right there. So, don't worry. The next. Oh, yep. Hey. Uh, well, I guess I'm. I can point I over. You can just point to yeah, it. Yeah, I can yeah. just point you to that. You can do like right a. Right there. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Well, there you go. I, I'm bad. So uh, let's just go over our predictions. <laughs> uh, sprinklers versus McMammals. Uh, me, I'm biased. Um, McMammals. I really don't hope. I really hope they don't bounce back. Um, but Ray, he knows the homie. Uh. He's like, hey, they beat my ass. I'm going to predict them this week. That's basically what I'm thinking. Um, our next game, Gars versus Allen and the Chipmunks. Uh, yeah, with how Gars teams played last week. Uh, listen, Allen, start praying now or f- figure out what you can do to improve sort of thing. Uh, and I then think s- Gar has a pop-off game that series. I, I think oh, this series? Off. Yeah, I think Gar will pop off. Okay. And Charles. I think Charles Gar is going to kind of make it hard on like for Allen's team to win. I like that prediction. Gator. Then we got some admins versus rookies and cream. Me and Paul going some admins and then everyone else going rookies and cream. I actually didn't even have to move rookies and cream. Uh, I literally just changed the summit admins um, from the sprinklers tinklers. So, uh, but yeah, that is going to wrap up pool a and then going into our cross match one. Uh, we got Beware versus the Gauntlet. I'm going Beware. I got faith. You know, maybe the Gauntlet, you know, s- still is trying to figure some stuff out. Um, but everyone else going the Gauntlet. And Neversaw then needs a bounce back. Never saw does need a bounce back. So he needs a bounce back. Me- like to. I mean, guys, Never saw just played against the only mid that's going to be able to be used with scaling picks. Oh, no, that's what that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, this is a series that she. It sh- is very much set up to bounce back and have it like who's their mid laner? Uh, NAQI. I think and she can bounce. Yeah, I, NAQI is probably decent, but like obviously not as good as Gumby. No, she need like I'm saying for this team to do well this season and probably make to try to make playoffs, they need to bounce back and win this. It's a must win. Listen, I mind. got faith in Yuhuzi to hold it down in the bot lane against Sporadic and PPP. That's my hope. So uh, good luck to them. Yep, good luck to them. <laughs> uh, World Soup Center versus Final Boss. Brissy going Final Boss. Everyone else is going World Soup Center. You know, they're all kind of betting on that Owen Hootie combo to kind of destroy. I got, I feel like I need to elaborate on my breakup comment. Um, Oh, okay. We got Final Boss with three of the, three of the four pieces of the Goblins, Robins Goblins roster. Uh The problem here is that, is that, um, to me, there's, there's three downgrades, which sounds crazy. Um, but Asuna Whoa. being moved to the top lane, uh, primarily plays carries, and a lot of the success came from Tom Kench when they had a. Uh, oh, what was his name? Oh, Lord uh, Kobayashi. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lord Kobayashi played tanks to it like a crazy good degree, and Asuna's been pulling out mostly carry champs. Pulled out Gragas once. Um, I don't think that tanks are really in his pool. Um, Hamia is the upgrade. Uh. So seeing if they can kind of like put on a secondary carry performance for this team. I just wanted, I just wanted to know, you said three downgrades and that's yes, what yes. I fr- freaked out yep. at. Uh, Alteris is the other, I mean, like, I'm sorry. You're just not going to live up to yeah, Big Bunny I mean, 69. 
The third downgrade is Ryan. And similar to what happened with OT Gator, there's just many, many better junglers in the pool this this year. Uh, and so much more likely to be able to punish the the, the um, scaling jungle picks that he likes to play. Okay. I, I didn't think Ryan was a downgrade since he's literally the same player, but you know what? That well, is it's just fair. relative. That yeah, is fair. It's, rel it's downgraded relative to the other jungles, I think is... I'd assume. No. Yeah. Uh, I do think this is going to be rough for Asuna and Ryan against GM Master. Like, yeah. R Rob is going to have to absolutely pop. There is a bit of a test this game, yeah. I will yeah. also say that Rob has historically had a very good record against Owen. Um, but again, I think the ADCs in the meta right now are just aren't. Hey, hello. That was hey, me. That was me. <laughs> Two, one. That's me. Who is, who is it, Venom? Who is it? That's me, DPT. Oh. We beat him. <laughs> Bri um, hey, Brissy play had to play Malphite into Silas. <laughs> oh <laughs> no! Uh, and Rob had to play against J4 Silas with Malphite ult. <laughs> yeah, but we won that. But uh, yeah, moving on, we got Power Friendship versus Wild Warriors, and we already know the answer. What was it? Yeah, it was we do. It was a two zero for Power Friendship. Let's go! <laughs> I'm two in the two and so guess five four let's go, or five three. Let's go. I, I got two points. Let's go guys. Um, trolling, man. um but you know I I don't really want to say anything. We'll cover it next week, so uh but let's go. We got I got another point. Uh, it, it feels good to, hey Venom, we're the same record now. The let's go, let's go, Venom. We're we're tied now. Let's go. Um and then finally wrapping it up, Elo Surfers versus um a thousand year dynasty. Um three of us going Elo Surfers and then Array. Oh, Not sure what that's all about, but a Thousand Year Dynasty. He's a hater. He's a hater. Yeah, I mean well. it's cause I hate on his mid champ pool. Let's see. I get it. I'm trying yeah. to think of like what Flash, Flash of Night versus Gumby is going to be a rough one. Yeah. Um, also, the Elo Surf's weakest role is their top laner, and that is also Thousand Year Dynasty's lowest Elo player. Yeah. Yeah. So... He's like I think uh, silver or no, sorry, gold four, and I think VLN. Honestly, the way he was playing, I would honestly also or he's a platinum actually. He's platinum. Plat peak. Yeah, plat peak. So, VLN is a plat that. peaker, and uh, ISO is a gold peaker. So, technically, hey, VLN is favorite. Play weak side. My, hey, my weak side king, hold it down. So, hold it down, call it. Big dummy can't hurt you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, therapy, I'm baby. really interested to see this bot lane. So, but yeah. That will, that will wrap up this episode of The Climb. And, uh... Yeah, if anyone's wondering, uh, the climb's gonna be longer now because we have to cover two extra games. So uh, you're welcome. I hope you like content. It felt long. Oh my it, god, we're, hour we're and forty five. Uh, no, hour and a half. We're we're not, uh, we're not quite hour and a half like, yet. So we got three minutes. Like... How do you want to kill three minutes? Or sorry, two. Wait, minutes. yeah, we want we want to. Yeah, we gotta have like some kind of end segment. Yeah. All right, all right. Just actually, 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 let's talk about your uh, let's talk about your um, power rankings today. Mine. What do you mean? So, uh, oh, X-rays. What do you mean? I recorded that yesterday. No, let's uh, it, pull it up. <laughs> if you want to waste three minutes, let's pull it up. <laughs> which one? Wait, which one? Gamer I can pull it up. Gamer Destroyer Brissy 2-3 at support. Yeah. Um, I did I did have explanations for all of my predictions if we want to go over that. But uh, that'd, oh, that'd be a little nah, long. Nah, I don't know if we actually want to kill good. three minutes. <laughs> we're we'll good. Just, Damn. We'll just, we'll I just spent all here. of these notes for you, X-ray, and I get nothing. No, wait. We got some, we got to do some shout outs, right? All right, Ooh, what do you want to shout out? Shout out, out. Shout, shout out, out Bouncy. Shout out, shout Bouncy. Shout out, Bouncy Knight. Bouncy. Shout out, shout Bouncy. out, Colin. Shout out, Joe. Shout out, Gumby. Shout out, Isodid. <laughs> shout out, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> shout out, Elo Surface as a team. Um, shout out, DV4VP for having a great series again today. Congrats, buddy. Shout out. You know what? Shout out, know... Owen, for the tactical nuke not maybe we'll see maybe this week we'll see um but so pan i want you to give give me a hot take this season you got hot i feel like i just gave you what the final boss roster but let me think of another one really quick um venom doesn't need one he always says hot takes bro, coming from the hot take king over there i or the freezing what, cold take what what did i, I 
I've never, I never have hot takes. All right. You never have hot, hot takes. takes. Of oh man, I feel like I've already said like everything. Hang on, let me look through my predictions again. Maybe I got something crazy in here. Extra, Ooh. your hot takes are so funny because you'll be like, it's a hot take, and you'll be like, oh, Gar is a top two top laner this season. How's that? Yo, like he's it. being. You think he's being one cake? Okay, I, I'll be a hot take. I don't think a one cake played as good as everybody hyped him up to be this first game, like this first series. I w oh, banana um, played way like banana played really well. I got another hot take. Game. All right, oh, let's hear it. Let's hear it. This is the last hot take, and then we're gonna last end it. hot take. Uh, Brissy Asian Jason is a bottom four bot lane. <laughs> Whoa! Uh, bottom five. I'll say bottom five. <sighs> wow. Okay, that I was that. not expecting. I don't think that's that. Like they ended too many of my flex games, and I'm I'm done with them. I don't think that's <laughs> oh, that crazy okay. of a... That's not that crazy of a hot take, just because like. Look at some of the other bot lanes, like, like King Catter. Okay, bottom two. Are you happy now, Pat? Huh? Is that what you bottom, wanted? Bottom two. Is <laughs> Not bottom two. Not bottom two. <laughs> bottom two crazy. is an even crazier hot. Take. I was just hey, negotiating with Patrick, saying my hot, my take wasn't hot enough. No, it's still a relative hot take, but I, I, I think they're like middle of the pack ADC support. Like but yeah, let's uh. That's where we're going to wrap it up with that crazy hot take by uh, Silpan. But uh, once again, thank you, Silpan and Venom, for joining me this week. Uh, I'm your host, X-Ray, and we will catch you next week on the Climb Here. I'm going to match them, and then I'm going to hit stop recording. All right, see ya! Oh, I, clicked, I didn't click it.